Let's begin our exploration of MongoDB at a high level with the why and history of NoSQL in general. So if you look around the software development landscape, you'll see that people, when they talk about how are we going to design our application, frequently say, well, let's assume that we have a relational database. Now we can discuss what type of ORM should we use, or should we use an ORM at all, or should we use microservices, or things like this. Basically, the fact that we're starting from a relational database is considered to be an axiom of software development. I have data. It goes into a relational database. Now let's talk about the architecture. Now let's talk about scaling. Let's talk about performance and so on. And just to drive home how strong of a statement this is, an axiom, recall the exact definition. A statement or proposition that is regarded as being self-evidently true. It's just clear that you start from a relational database. So one of the things I hope you take away from this course is that the database style, the database engine is a choice. It's a really important choice that has actually super important and far reaching implications for your application. So I want to sort of break this mold that starting from a relational database is an axiom. Sometimes it makes sense. Sometimes it's perfect. But a lot of times, as you'll see throughout this course, starting with a document database is actually a better choice. Now, what is NoSQL? Ask five people what NoSQL is, you'll probably get five different answers back. Some people will say, well, the No stands for not only. So NoSQL is not only SQL. Well, that's a great open-minded view of the world, but I'm sorry to say that's not what NoSQL is. Maybe it means it doesn't have SQL. Maybe it means the system operates without the SQL language, right? Without select star from this, da da da, da without that language. If we look at the history, I think you'll see that this is also not the case. Well, here's a toaster. This toaster operates without SQL. Is it a NoSQL toaster? <laughs> I don't think so. And of course not. It's, it's not a NoSQL toaster. It's just a toaster. NoSQL doesn't mean it operates without the SQL query language. In fact, I believe that DocumentDB, Microsoft's document database that runs in Azure, actually more or less uses a flavor of the SQL query language to query it. So no, it's not about excluding this SQL query language. It's something entirely different. So let's next look at the history. And I think you'll have a really good idea of what NoSQL is. And maybe we'll come to a little bit closer agreement on the definition of NoSQL. The first record of what you might consider modern day NoSQL, there were some older versions, much, much older about object databases that don't really carry on through today. But what we think of when we talk about NoSQL today really started back in 2009 in San Francisco. So this guy, Johan Oskarsson, who at the time was working at Last FM, was getting together like a, a big data scaling databases type of meetup in San Francisco. And the idea was we're going to talk about open source databases, distributed databases, that is databases that are easily horizontally scalable and that might not be traditionally relational. This description here on the right actually comes from Wikipedia. The name itself, the actual NoSQL, the word, I don't believe it's here, but it was in a, a previous accounting. It's not in Wikipedia, which if I could find the reference, I definitely should go back there and edit it, right? Is there's another guy named Eric Evans who was attending this meeting as well. And Johan said, hey, what are we going to call this meeting? Like we don't have a name for these types of groups, this type of thing that we're doing. And let's try to get like something short, like uh, say a hashtag that we can use on Twitter to talk about it. So Eric Evans said, how about hashtag NoSQL, right? And that is the origin of, of the modern day term. And the idea was, it was meant to describe this group of people mostly running web apps with lots of data with high performance implications or requirements, getting together to talk about how can we give up some of the features of relational databases to enable other types of things. So maybe we'll give up autonomy, the acid uh, properties. Maybe we'll give up joins. Maybe we'll give up transactions, things like that. And if we do that, how do we maybe structure our data differently? How do we structure our databases differently to be better at basically being cluster friendly? All right, so to me, this, this is the idea of what a NoSQL database is. It's a database that gives up some of the relational database uh, features or requirements or properties so that it is more cluster friendly, it is more friendly to scaling and sharding and things like that. 